Well, we've got Man Candy walking on a straight path now, a straight line rather, and it would be nice if we could control that path of action and have him walk along a curved path around the corner or upper hill. And the way we do that is using an action modifier that uses a curve to deform the action. Very similar to using a curve to deform a lattice or an object, you can have it deform an action. So first thing we have to do is add the curve. And to start with, we'll make that path straight. And that way we'll be able to correct any little errors that might crop up due to adding it with slightly wrong parameters. And once we have everything working to our satisfaction, we'll show how easy it is to curve that path around and deform the motion. And those three bones that I had mentioned were very interesting, where the torso and the feet are going to receive the actual modifier as a target. So first we'll snap the cursor to the torso, and we'll snap shift desk cursor to selection, and we'll add and we'll add a curve right at this point. Now the other bones won't need curve modifiers because they're all parented to either the foot bones or the torso, and so they all will just move along with those bones. So we only need to modify in the end three bones out of the whole armature, which is a pretty good deal. So let's look at adding a curve. And we can add a curve of any type, but the easiest one to use is going to be a path curve. An add curve, and we'll select path, which is a nice 3D curve that we can use for this purpose. And it'll add to it right where the cursor is. Now what I want is for that path to stretch out from the initial position of the torso roughly to the final position of the torso. It doesn't have to be perfectly accurate. So we're going to hit G to grab those points and then Y to constrain to the Y axis and move those forward until the first point is roughly located right where the cursor is. Now we have to get the last point to be at the last frame, the last position of the torso. So we simply move the uh, time timeline forward until the last frame of the action. And now we have to scale about that first point. So we'll scale around the cursor as a pivot by hitting the dot key. And you'll notice it changed the pivot mode to the uh, 3D cursor. And comma key will toggle it back. And you'll notice as I toggle it between the two with the dot and comma key that the manipulators jump to the new pivot point. So now we hit S for scale and we can scale the entire path till the last point in the path just barely touches the torso at its latest position. And we can always zoom in and make sure that that's just about right and it doesn't have to be completely accurate even. A, a tiny bit of inaccuracy here won't really be felt at the end of the animation. And we can zoom into the beginning to make sure that first point is the right place and we can just move it or snap it to the cursor if you want to. So now we have a curve here. We can hit tab to go out of edit mode and back into object mode. And that's it. So let's save, control W or file save either way. And before we start, I'm going to go back and put our cursor pivot point back relative to the bounding box center, just because that's a, a default and less confusing. And I'm going to turn off the record button here in the timeline editor, because I don't want to add any keyframes accidentally, because that would really confuse us a lot. So now we'll select the armature. And we'll select, more specifically, we have to select its NLA strip. And we have to add a modifier to it. So we just click on the Add Modifier button here. And you'll notice we have a Deform modifier by default. And you'll notice that it's not the only type of modifier. There's another two called Noise and Oomph. But Deform is really what we need. And it means Curve Deform. But specifically. And there's two empty fields here, channel and object. Now the channel refers to which action channel for which bone we need to apply the deformer to.
and that's going to be one of those three privileged bones. In this case, the torso, the foot dot L and foot dot R, and the object is the curve object, which in this case is just the object called curve. Now you can click on these and type, if you want to, to enter the names of the correct things. So let's add the uh, torso bone here, torso, and enter. But typing can be error prone and takes a while. So we can use a couple of shortcuts that Blender gives us to save us from typing too much. First of all, if you do start typing like two or three letters, you can hit tab and Blender will find the right name in its database to continue to. So that will give you the assurance that you typed right as well as saving you time. Or you can click on the thing you want to copy, go over a text field that has that name, either text field will work, and hit Control c with your mouse cursor hovering over that text field. And then you hover to where you want to put it and type Control v And that's you done. And now we have a curve deform working almost perfectly, except that man candy is walk is deformed on a curve in the wrong axes. He's going up and down instead of going backwards and forward. Well, the reason for that is that a lot of things have to be satisfied for this deformer to really work properly. And you'll notice that when we added the curve, we added that curve into the side view. And Blender adds things into a scene, view aligned. And so now the Z axis for the curve is actually not aligned with the Z axis of world space and for man candy. It's aligned with the X axis instead. It's actually pointing straight at us. It's that blue dot in the middle. So we can just right click on the curve to select it and hit Control A, apply scale and rotation and now it's aligned properly in space. And Man Candy is not going up and down anymore, he's actually on the curve, but he's sort of stuck at the end for the whole animation, which is not quite right either. So let's have a look about why that's happening. And the reason for that is actually a little bit trickily hidden inside the curve in edit mode. Now I'll move the viewport a little bit so we can see better what's going on and zoom in. And if I hit tab or go into edit mode on the curve, you'll see that there are little arrows drawn on, on the curve and they're pointing backwards. They're not pointing in the same direction as the walk. And that means that the direction of the curve is going the wrong way. So we should select all the points in the curve by hitting A once or twice to toggle the select all and then hit W key and switch direction and now the, the arrows are pointing along the direction of the walk which is what we want and we can hit tab again to get out of edit mode but man candy is still stuck on the curve now he's stuck at the beginning and even worse he's facing backwards now if you want to find out why that's going on let's click on the armature object and go back into object mode by hitting control tab or selecting it from the menu over here You'll notice if you look at his uh, axes that his Y axis is facing backwards relative to where he normally faces forwards. So Man Candy looks forward in the negative Y direction as opposed to the positive Y direction. If you go into the object buttons here of the armature, you'll notice there's an Anim Settings or Animation Settings tab, and in it there's a Track field which is by default set to Y. Now since Man Candy faces forward in negative Y, we have to set that to negative Y. And now he's facing forwards. And he, in fact, will animate along this curve now. So I could actually say that the curve deform walk works right now. If we hit Alt A, you'll see the only thing happening is that it's affecting the speed of the action as well as the direction of it. And once we apply to that to the feet, everything will line up again. However, I don't think I want the curve to affect the speed of the walk. I want him to walk at a constant speed. And so this um, ease in and ease out that the curve has by default is really not what I want in that situation. 
I don't want man candy to accelerate up to a speed and then decelerate to a stop in this case because that's not quite how you walk. Um, a slow walk has a different shape from a fast walk. You can't just modulate the speed of it like that. And to find out why that is, we can click we can click on the curve object because that's where the information for that acceleration and deceleration is still is stored. And then we need to look at the IPO curve editor and we'll look at what's called the speed curve for the path. So we'll click path here and you'll see that there's a curve which has ease in and ease out at the end. It has the smooth in and smooth out instead of being a straight line. Now because we don't want anything, we can just delete it by clicking on it and hitting X. And now we have a curve modifier that's not changing anything. Man candy is just walking forward except for the slight inaccuracy in the beginning end points which you can barely see. Now let's save our work since we've gotten something that's not broken and we can hit Alt A and some of you might be saying hey you just did a whole bunch of steps and you've accomplished nothing he's doing exactly the same thing he did before and I'll say no if you start deforming that curve now you'll actually start deforming the entire walk and see how the torso is stuck to the curve and that's exactly what we set out to accomplish in the beginning so in order to see things I'll go into a top view and I'll make the cat path curved I'll just start moving points around maybe I'll move this point over over to the side over here and I'll move the last point as well in a moment I move the last point here so he's walking along a curve as opposed to a straight line and you can see that his torso is indeed following that nice bent curve and we can even have it go up a hill if we go into the front view here we can grab that segment and pull it up and maybe tweak a few points and his torso is climbing up a hill that's great except we have to do the same thing to his feet because his feet are still going in that original straight line from back to front and not following the curve. Well that's pretty easy to change. We'll just add a couple of modifiers, one for his left foot and one for his right. I can copy the name of the curve here with control C, then add a modifier and I could paste it there. and add another modifier so now we'll paste the name of the curve there and now we'll see we have to put in the right channel for that modifier so let's select the foot control tab to go into edit mode open transform properties and select the name of the bone control C we have to hover the mouse exactly right over the field or it'll do the wrong thing and then control V and now we've pasted that into the modifier channel We'll do the same for the other foot. So we'll type curve and you can type C-U-R and hit tab here. And then we can right click on the foot, copy its name, and then paste it. So now we have the curve modifying the entire action essentially. Since we have both the torso and the left and right feet. Let's just have a look at it and verify that it's working right and the feet aren't slipping at all everything works perfectly right along that path well there are some things that are not quite so perfect you'll notice that his entire torso is angled back as he's climbing the path and that's because the curve deform is affecting everything and we do like the fact that the feet are angled up but the torso Really, when you walk up a hill, you don't angle your back backwards. I mean, up a steep enough hill, you would fall over backwards if that happened. Indeed, you angle your torso more or less straight. And we can do that by looking at the torso, the modifier that's on the torso channel. So if you click on those two little arrows and select Deform Torso, and then go where it says All in the modifier, 
and ch and that affects which axes affect the rotation axes for the bone and if we click on that and so and those are relative to the curve if we click on that and we select xy so the z axes won't be affected and we just arrow forward we'll see that the torso is now vertical again and so that's really kind of cool except we would like to tweak where the feet are differently from where the torso is on different parts of the walk and we can't really do that just with one curve modifier for the whole action but we can do that more easily by copying that curve and changing the modifier on the feet to be that new curve so we'll right click on the curve and then we'll hit shift D and then we'll grab it and we can use the middle mouse button if you want to constrain that to move in the Z axis and place it somewhere where the feet are and then let's it's called curve 001 by default let's change it to foot curve and we'll copy that name by hitting control C while we're hovering over that text box then we'll select the modifiers for each of the feet and we'll hit control V in the object field to change the curve to foot curve and that already looks a lot better and it also gives us the, just because the position of the curve is different but it also gives us the option of tweaking uh, individually how the torso or how the feet are moving so let's play it back and have a look at it and let's select let's scrub it forward a little bit make sure it's good at the end in the beginning whoops we went over the end here you can click hold which works if the character is walking on a path uh, on a, not on a path but he, it jumps off the path at the end so you just have to make sure that your path is long enough in your animation for you to have the character um, still where you expect them to be so let's select one or two of these curves and edit a few points just to show that you can edit independently what each part is doing so you can see how we have the feet balanced on that wire and we can move that around and there you have it so you can always you can even have uh, more granularity on the path by subdividing points so you can have the character walking on a bumpier ground or or a less bumpy ground and you can copy that second curve for the foot and have each foot deformed by a different curve as well you can even if you want animate these curves so for instance you can have a surface with two curves on it that are being animated by the same modifier and you can have some kind of an action where man candy is walking on an undulating surface and his feet are tracking the surface perfectly and that's actually quite possible and easy to do if you want to do some kind of funky animation like that. And that concludes putting Mancandy on a path.